with the data processed. Then, I want to read one chunk at a time from the connection and systematically write them to the file. This way, I never... On the last episode of BTS HTTP Server Series, I wrote the barebone HTTP server that can handle requests and respond appropriately. I think it covered the basics, but that server is limited in what it can do. It can only handle text-based requests and responses. That means no image or other media exchange. And then, if the request or the response is larger than one kilobyte, well, I'm out of luck. Again, not great for media. Oh, hey there! That's my challenge for today. Refactor my server to handle arbitrarily sized requests and avoid treating everything as text. If I want to be able to handle large requests, the first thing I can do is to read the stream in chunks, one kilobyte at a time until there's nothing left to read. Once I have all of my chunks, I can concatenate them together into a typed array and voila, arbitrarily sized request. The second challenge is to figure out how much of the data stream is the request line in the headers versus the body. I want to avoid reading too far into the body since it might be binary data. I know that the body starts after the first empty line of the request. So I could technically search for the first empty line and then I'll know that the rest is the body and only parse the first part. So I wrote this function that will try to find a sequence within the array. It first tries to find the first occurrence of a byte and then I can just test the following byte until I have a match. In our case, I want to find two CRLF sequences. I try to find the first CR, then check if it's followed by a LF, then a CR, then a LF. And I repeat this until I find the empty line. The problem with this approach is that I have to traverse the whole request. And it might end up that the request doesn't have a body and therefore I wasted my time. Instead, I will read the bytes one line at a time, finding the nearest CRLF and parse the line in order. On the first line, I will extract the method and the path. Whenever I find an empty line, I will assume that the body is next and stop. All the line between the request line and the body will be parsed as header. On the other hand, the function to encode the response is absurdly simple. I can pretty much just use a function I already made and just encode the result. The biggest difference is that I have to be aware that the body might not be text and should be kept as a typed array. I can encode the header and then concat the result with the body. From there, I have enough to write a simple server using the serve function I've implemented previously. I can decode the request, then encode the response. With that, I could respond to every request with a file. This is a good start to a static file server. I can start my server and open a browser to visualize the image. With a bit more effort, I can serve any file within a given directory. I would attempt to access the file and cross-reference the MIME type from a created list using the file extension. If the system can't find the file, I will return a 404 not found. With a broadly similar approach, I can receive any file. Now, you can guess with the runtime of this video that things cannot be that simple. I see two problems with my current approach. I have to load the whole file in memory before I can offload them to the file system, which can become a bottleneck at scale. Another surprising issue is with file upload. When uploading file, some client, for example curl, will make the request in two steps. The first request is testing the terrain, stating that it wants to upload a file of a certain type and length, and requires that the server replies with 100 continue before sending the file. Because of this behavior, I need to retain access to the connection, the writable resource. So I think I will have to refactor the serve function from accepting a function that takes a typed array as an argument to a function that takes a connection. This could also be a positive change that would facilitate implementing powerful middleware later on. There's two ways that my server can handle file upload. 
One possibility is that the client tries to post the file directly. I have the option to read the header and refuse the request if it is too large. The other possibility is that the client expects me to reply first. In both cases, I will read the first chunk and then start creating the file with the data processed. Then, I want to read one chunk at a time from the connection and systematically write them to the file. This way, I never hold more than one kilobyte in memory at a time. I do this until I can't read a whole kilobyte. This tells me that the file has been completely copied over. From there, I can rework the part that responds with a file. Similarly to the two-step request for receiving a file, a client may opt to request the headers for a given file with the head method. Because I want to support this feature, I can first get information from the request file, then I can start writing the header and only if the request method is get, not head, I will copy the file to the connection. Wow. At this point, I have to either be very confident with my programming skills or sadistic. I need to implement a slew of integration tests before going any further. I created four static files for this purpose. A short text file, less than a kilobyte, a longer text file, an image, and music. For that purpose, I wrote a higher order function that will initialize a server before calling the test function. With that, I generate programmatically a bunch of tests to download and upload files. This ensures that my code is working as expected. When I got to this point, I realized that my server function was starting to be very low. I knew I needed to refactor it into two functions, receive static file and send static file. But because I need to be able to check the request line to route to the right function, and I can only read a request once, I knew I was in trouble. I need something that can keep part of the data in memory while retaining access to the raw connection. I could have decoded the request and shoved the connection in there and call it a day. But it didn't felt right, and I guess I love making my life harder. The solution I came up with was to implement a buffer. I would hold in memory one kilobyte at a time, shifting the bytes each time I read a new chunk. The advantage of this is I can move the cursor back to the beginning of the buffer and read back the parts that I need. Best of all, the buffer has the same method as a connection, so the two could be used interchangeably. I won't go into the detail because it's a bit dry, but if you want to check out the code, it's currently on GitHub. The link is in the description. With this new toy, I can read a chunk from the connection, route the request, move the cursor back to the beginning, and pass the buffer to the handler function like nothing happened. The peak function specifically has a similar signature to read. The difference is that it will move the cursor back, read a chunk from the buffer in memory, and then finally move the cursor back again. To finish this like a boss, I finalized the receive static and send static file function taking care of the edge cases. Finally, I run all the integration tests one more time to confirm that I did a good job and <sighs> sleep. This one turned out to be a lot more full of surprise I was prepared for. When I realized that some client sends files in two steps, it really threw a wrench to my plan. I really hope you're learning as much as I am. On the bright side, this forced me to put together all of the tools that I know I will need for the next episode. Next, I want to look into streaming in more detail and build some middleware, starting with a logger. From there, I'm sure I can tackle building a router, which will wrap up everything pretty nicely. All of the code is available on GitHub. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Oh, speaking of that, I launched a Discord server. If you're interested to join, there's an invitation link also in the description. At any rate, if this video was useful to you, hit the like button, leave a comment to let me know, or best of all, subscribe if you haven't yet. Okay, bye now.